Hello everyone. So till now we have seen two types of cases. In the first one, we had applied a load that was normal to the surface of the body. And in the second one, we had applied a load that was parallel to the surface of the body. So if we say that only tensile stress exists in the first case and if we say that only shear stress exists in the second case then these two statements would be wrong. The reason is to define the tensile stress or to say normal stress and shear stress first we have to talk about a basic thing that is a section or we can say a plane on which these stresses are acting. I mean first we have to take a plane. So if we talk about the first case, if we take a plane that is perpendicular to the applied load, then on this particular plane we can say that there will be only normal stresses or tensile stresses for this particular case. And in the second case, if we take a plane that is parallel to the applied load inside the body, then we can say that on this particular plane there will be only shear stresses. So to say that the stress is normal or shear, a basic thing we need is a plane or section. We cannot talk about this normal stresses and shear stresses in absolute ways. So it means that I mean what I want to tell you here is this normal stress and shear stress these are just the components of stress and these components depend upon the section what we are talking about. But if you want to say that there is stress in the body, so does it need any section to say that? So because of this applied, applied load we can directly say obviously there will be stress in the body. So this is the absolute term that is there will be stress in the body but to say there will be normal stress and shear stress we need to define a section. So in this case itself if we take a section that is not normal to the applied load. So this is we, we have taken like the, a plane in this way so I have drawn it here. So the applied load is in this direction so the stress will be in the opposite direction. So this is the resultant stress here. So we cannot say that result, this resultant stress is normal stress or shear stress. We can simply say that there is a stress in this body. But if we talk about this particular plane then we take two components. One that is normal to the surface and the other one that is parallel to the surface. Then we can say this normal component is the normal stress and then we can say this parallel component is the shear stress. Now for this body itself if we take another section that is in this way if we take a section so still applied load is in this direction and the resultant stress is in the opposite direction. Now if we still again talk about this particular plane so one component we can take that is normal to the surface and other component we can take that is parallel to the surface. Now this component here becomes the normal stress and this component here becomes the shear stress. So this normal component and the shear component are changing as we change the plane which I mean the plane that we are trying to study. But this resultant stress it was like this in the previous case and it is still at the same place or in the same direction and the amount will also be same because of this applied load is same. So this resultant stress is something that is not changing as we are changing the plane but this normal and shear stress are changing depending upon the cross section or depending upon the section that we are talking about. Now because we are talking about a small bar so we can directly take a section to study this normal component and shear component because we make a basic assumption in this case that is the stress remain uniform over the cross section 
of the body but if we have to take a bigger example that is let's say if we have a machine component or if we say we have a ship or a plane then we cannot directly take a section in this manner so we have to do something else that we'll try to understand so let's say we have this component of some machine and then loads are applied in some random direction then we want to study the stress inside this component so we cannot directly cut a section and then study the stress on this section i mean we cannot directly take the normal and shear components because the reason here is that stress is do not remain constant over the section so to study these bigger cases that is bigger components we use something called stress element so it can be used anywhere where the on a larger scale there are i mean the stresses are varying so we take a small part that is the idea here is that it should be small enough small enough so that stress is do not vary or stresses do not change over the over the element so inside this body for this point we take a particular stress element so generally it is of cube or cuboid shape in 3d and then we write the components of the stresses that is shear and normal stress for this stress element that is if we are talking about a 3d case then in that case there will be normal stresses on all the faces and then along with that there will be shear stresses also on all the faces so it is very i mean for our study purpose it will be difficult to understand this 3d case so in our syllabus we only have this 2d case that is plane stress condition plane stress condition so in the in this 3d case if we say that these two, let's say this is x y and z so if we say that in z direction or this plane that is front and back if on these two planes if the normal and shear stresses are zero then we get this plane stress condition so here we have normal stresses in let's say this is x direction this is y direction so we have normal stresses in x and y direction and we also have the shear stresses that is like this so these stresses are tau xy on this also it is tau xy this is tau yx and this is also tau yx how do we say it is xy or yx so for tau if it is i mean tau xy means that it is on x face and it is in the y direction that is the first one defines the face and the second one defines the direction so this is also x face and y direction that is direction is downward in the y axis and y x means that it is the y face and x direction so it is in the this direction that is the x direction so that's how we say x y or y x for shear stress so this is about the stress element that we'll use to study the transformation of stress then we have one more thing to understand that is a stress we can say stress is not a vector but it is something called a tensor so to go in more detail about tensor it will not be useful just for basic understanding let's say in the previous lecture we saw a case where only shear stresses were acting in this way so if we say that 
let's say this is 45 degree as we took earlier this is tau on all the faces so if you want to find out the resultant stress in this diagonal direction so if you say that this is tau and this is tau and this angle is 45 so the resultant would be root 2 times tau as we do for the vectors so this will be wrong this is not how we do for the stresses that's why it is not a vector that is stress is not a vector it is something called tensor so because what happens here in this case itself in this element this is sigma x here which is acting in the rightward direction and in this same element this is sigma x which is acting in the leftward direction so this sigma x and this sig sigma x both are not something different these are the same stresses but they have different direction over this element but in case of vector we know that it has a fixed magnitude fixed magnitude and direction so direction is also fixed in case of vector but here we are seeing that direction is changing that's why it is not a vector it is something called a tensor so we will not go in further detail but we will see I mean we we'll, now we will see that once we know the stresses on one plane that is if we say we have this stress element and we know the value of this sigma x sigma y for this defined axis x y sigma y and similarly we know the shear stresses then how can we transform this that is we know for this particular element that is aligned in a particular way then if we change this angle of inclination that is initially this element was like this then we have rotated this element then how can we calculate this the component of stresses that is let's say here it is sigma x dash this is sigma y dash so here also this is sigma x dash sigma y dash so how can we calculate the stress component after it has been rotated by some fixed angle so we know the angle we know the stresses in one particular direction or in one particular alignment then how can we calculate the stresses in other alignment that we will try to understand.